Ah, back with another video. Oh God. This one I'm going into blind. All the property management said was there's an AC issue. Thankfully, oh, there's not a, uh, a tenant on this one. It's a vacant. So I got all the space in the world to really just try and figure this out without somebody complaining to me that it's feeling like 100 degrees. Jesus Christ, Dr. Pepper is giving me a lot of burps right now. Um, but that's enough yapping. Let's just get to it. This don't even seem like anything's wrong. Reading 73, set to 70. It was set to 73, I just clicked it. But I guess, is the fan in the on? No, it's set to auto, it's set to cool. Let's look and see what we got here. Clean air filter, size is 20 by 25 by one. This is one of those tri-level homes. Um, let's see if they've got another return down here anywhere. Just kind of get a feel for the whole house. Nothing down here. Are there one of the steps? Nope, nothing on the steps. Nothing over here. I wonder if there's going to be a split system or a package unit. And nothing down here. Vent there, vent there. Is that the only return in the whole house? And you got the vents on the floor here, so I wonder if they're running the vents through the attic for the upstairs too, or if they're gonna keep them in the floor. They're gonna keep them in the floor. So, real quick question for people because I got into a conversation with this uh, with somebody online. If your vents are on the floor and you have a ceiling fan, should you leave the ceiling fan blowing down or pulling the air up to try to mix, get that cold air up off the floor? And in this situation, in this scenario, we do have a floor return. So if all the cold air, and, and this is just the way that I'm thinking, if all your cold air is just blowing out on the floor, we all know cold air falls, hot air rises, or warm air rises. Um, if it's just all on the floor, it's just gonna fall, fall, fall down, and just get sucked up, sucked back into the return. And not actually, in my theory, the way that I'm thinking, it's not actually gonna mix well with the warm air that you know your face, your face is up here. The thermostat is at almost you know your shoulder level. I'm six one, so. Um, it's not mixing properly in my thought. So I, I tell people all the time, if you've got floor uh, supply vents in the floor, then and your return is also in the floor, then you need to reverse the flow of your ceiling fans. But everything here seems like it's running fine. Let's look at the unit. Oh, it's a split. All right, I got my gauges hooked up on there so I can like talk you guys through my thinking process on what's going on there. but. Just gonna let it keep running. Kind of pop down up under here. And come on, flashlight. There we go. And get to the furnace. Holy God, it's cold down here. Well, looks like there used to be a floor return probably before they did or like return in the stairs um i've seen on a lot of tri-level homes they'll have like what like four by like the width a uh, four inch by whatever the width of the stair is like a little register right there for the uh for the return air downstairs to get sucked in but whoever replaced this unit kind of just did away with that they did the same for the upstairs staircase too it looks like because Unless that's panned off on the, but nah, yeah, that had to have been the upstairs staircase as well, with the same way. But when they did carpet, they just got rid of it. So let's see what we got. 
This thing is unaccessible. Holy God. They put the return right here, that one in the wall, and then you've got the flue pipe in the way. Line set coming this way. There's just no room to get over there. I mean, like, I could lay on my side. I don't know why the camera cut out, but I could lay on my side right there, but I'd have to disconnect the flue to get over there. This was just poorly thought about. I mean, if you flipped the furnace over that way, but still left the coil facing this way, I guess you could walk around, crawl around that pillar right there and have a lot more serviceable room right there. Um, but then you would have had to extend the, the gas line a bit. It just looks like there wasn't a whole lot of thought to this, in my opinion. Maybe that's just me. Um, but is there a tag on that? No. Not this one. I have to run that serial number and see if that matches up with the condenser outside as far as brands. Because um, it's a grand air out there. I want to say that's a Bryant, but I mean, they're all ICP, so it really don't matter. But uh, yeah, this was a genius idea, whoever did this. But I still don't see anything really wrong with the unit. Um, so I guess let me try and see if I can get data plates. Y'all let me know right now. Um, if this was like a service call you went to, Super tech or no super tech, if y'all looked at that, would y'all even bother like looking at it? Like actually diagnosing it? If something was wrong, if something was wrong, would you just walk away and say it's unaccessible or would you try? I just, I just gotta know. But uh, let's take a look at these pressures. The data plate for that EVAP coil says it's a TXV. Um, oh crap, I forgot to check the serial number in there and see if they're the same um, but this does call for an 11 degree sub pool and it's running it was running like just a 12 yeah 12 so it's a little bit high over there but the superheat staying around 23 high 22 um, the suction line temps fairly high I don't want to add any more though because the, the sub pool is pretty much on point. Um, and it's given a tremendous delta T inside. I don't know what they said was wrong, but I don't see anything really wrong. I mean, shoot, it's, uh, let me see right now. I don't know if you can tell on my watch. Yep, 96 degree is the real feel outside, and it's 73 degrees in the house, so. Uh, they're gonna get billed for this, and I can't find nothing wrong, but at least I've got things documented and notated because this is like the first time we've been to this property. I think they probably like just bought it. Um, oh, here's something else I could do. The first Delta T I took um, a screenshot of was my probe right on the, the uh, filter grill. And it was reading like, it was reading lower than the, than the thermostat was reading. So I moved it over here away from this, away from the return, and kind of higher than the thermostat just to see what kind of temperature it'd be pulling. It's probably gonna, it'd probably be even higher if I put it up there. Um, do you guys think they should have left the return in the stairs for both of these? Or was the right move just doing this single one? I don't know. I do not know. But it feels great in here. What's the, uh... Oh, the backlight display does not work right now. It's reading 75. Hmm. That's weird. It was just reading 73 in here. Also noticed, not sure, I mean, it probably will show some type of issue. Last I checked, the arrow for filter dryers was not supposed to go to the condenser. It's supposed to go to the evaporator coil. Because with this being a straight AC, there is no reversing valve in there and that's a gas furnace. It's not a dual fuel setup. Um, the refrigerant comes out of the compressor, goes through the condenser, goes to the evaporator coil, then back through the suction line into the compressor. So that, that 
is definitely a issue, but I don't know if that caused whatever issue they were having. Um, so that's something else I can notate, and huh, I'm going to get on up out of here. Good old service, good old easy service call, honestly. And I did check the, uh, I used um, the Baker distributor app because that's one of my favorite supply houses here in this area that I'm in of Augusta, Georgia. They got an app where for every, I can pretty much check the warranty info for, um, for like every unit, I think, except for train. I can get majority of the ICP, like pretty much all the ICP stuff, the Heil, Arco Air, Tempstar, stuff like that. Um, I can get them. There's a separate category for the Carrier Bryant Payne stuff. I can get Goodman Amanda Daikin, um, Nordine Equipment, and the, I think Manitowoc, but I, I'd never use that brand. I don't know if I said the name right. Um, but I can get their stuff too. Um, the cool thing about it is their their app also comes with the like the literature for the for the unit, like kind of like how the Blue On app will. Um, the Baker app will kind of do the same thing. Sometimes the serial numbers are hit and miss. Oh, it can also do Ream Ream and Rudd. Um, if you put in the thermal zone equipment under the Ream and Rudd, I noticed it rarely ever gives you like the homeowner's info on that. Um, but it'll still give you the uh, like the basic model number, you know where it came from, date, everything like that. Uh, I, I use it for the purpose of our invoices to let the property management know if there if any recent equipment that has been installed on their properties, or whatever, um, if it's under warranty. I actually had to use it today for one of our installs, uh, recent install work. Um, to check and see if something was still covered, but it didn't, it, it was not registered. So that's an instance. But again, the app was real cool. I can look up the uh, the diagrams and stuff. If things, if parts have been rep repaired under warranty, that'll be notated too. But that, that's just that's just the app that I used to try and uh, figure out if things are still covered under warranty. And this one is not. It's 2020 um, furnace, uh, I mean, furnace condenser coil and evaporator fan, evaporator coil. Uh, they all came out of the same distributor. Ship dates were different, but for the most part, whoever installed the system got everything all at one time. I just still can't believe that they installed it the way that they did. So. Oh, man fairly easy service call again couldn't find really nothing wrong um i don't know if the property management had somebody else come out faster um to see what was going on but i don't know what could have been wrong um everything seems to check out just fine even for the size of the for the size of the equipment everything seems like it's cooling off this house pretty fairly well especially for a tri-level home um, I think those, since I've started doing service work, those have been like the most difficult things to really work on, um, and try to keep people comfortable, uh, just because that upstairs where the bedrooms are just normally gets so freaking hot on these like really hot days. But, uh, what, what would you guys have done? Would you guys have tried to dive like deep, deep dive into that TXV and see what was wrong? I, I, personally don't see the reason why at this point because it's maintain it's got spot on sub cool not really spot on because it wants 11 it's reading 12 um it's got good sub cool and but the t the the super heat is just fairly high i think i think i was told like rule of thumb is like around 15 degrees 8 to 15 and that's running 22 so it's, it's pretty high but it's again it was keeping 73 in the home when i got here I, I remember when I first got in, though, the reason the thermostat was probably reading 75 is because I had the, the front door open um, while I was getting my equipment and stuff hooked up. So the radiant heat off that glass door probably could have hit the thermostat and caused it to read the wrong number. Um, but couldn't find nothing wrong on this one, except for a, a, 
a backwards filter dryer. So I got about two more calls left. I'm gonna try and get this stuff done, get home to my pup and let him out before the rain gets here. So with that being said, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will catch you on the next one. Later.